Thank you to the moderator and to the office of the town manager for providing this forum to address town meeting members. By a vote of nine to zero, the Finance Committee is pleased to present the proposed fiscal year 2023 operating budget constituting the main motion under Article 10 of the annual town meeting warrant. Following the printing of the warrant and over the course of subsequent discussions, the Finance Committee also identified an additional $1 million in unappropriated free cash and recommends by a vote of nine to zero that town meeting adopt the motion to amend offered by Mr. Connolly to increase line five of the budget by the same amount funded through free cash. Aside from this recommended supplement, the proposed budget is identical to the budget printed in the warrant on pages 19 through 21. I would also encourage town meeting members to read the Finance Committee's report to town meeting, which appears on pages 1 through 12 of the warrant and provides a detailed description of all components of the budget. I will not repeat all those details here, and I will instead provide a summary. Overall, the fiscal year 2023 proposed budget and town spending plan are based on a conservative revenue projection of $238.8 million, which is $8.4 million or 3.9% greater than fiscal year 2022. In particular, fiscal year 2023's property tax revenue is increasing by 4.9% over fiscal year 2022, based on the annual increase in the tax base plus strong new growth. New growth includes increases in property values due to property improvements or a change in use. Fiscal year 2023 new growth also accounts for significant public utilities equipment improvements. State aid is projected to increase by 2.5% or more than $354,000, and Chapter 70 school aid and unrestricted general government aid are projected to increase 2.7%. For fiscal year 2023, we are anticipating that local receipts will increase by almost $1.2 million or 11.7% compared with the current year's expected receipts. This represents a recovery in local receipts following a steep drop at the beginning of the pandemic. However, motor vehicle excise tax receipts are still estimated to be only 85% of the receipts in fiscal year 2021. As the economy rebounds from the effects of the pandemic, we can expect that the amount of local receipts will continue to increase and to grow as a proportion of the town's revenue. We will nonetheless continue to project conservatively to avoid unnecessary risk. One other significant funding source is free cash. After the close of the last fiscal year, the Department of Revenue certified nearly $17 million of free cash available for appropriation. Free cash consists of unspent funds that remain at the close of the prior year including the amount that actual collected revenues exceed estimated revenues and the amount that appropriations exceed expenditures. Free cash is greater than typical due to several pandemic related factors, including withholding of spending in some areas and lower than usual expenses for other activities, such as travel, professional training and community events, which were canceled or held virtually. In addition, many COVID related costs were covered by federal grants or reimbursements. Because the level of free cash can be volatile, much of it should be used for one-time expenditures. The amount of free cash used to fund the operating budget, including the recommended supplement, is consistent with the town's policy on the use of free cash. On the expenditure side, the largest increases in the budget are in town-wide expenses, education, and public works. The largest increases among the town-wide expenses are attributable to retirement assessments in line six, increasing almost $990,000 or 9.5%, and to group health insurance, employee benefits, and administrative costs in line three, increasing $793,000 or 4.8%. These increases are connected not only to rising costs, but also to the growth in the number of benefited positions. In addition, there is a proposed appropriation of $1.3 million to classification performance and settlements in line nine, which serves as a reserve to fund new collective bargaining agreements that appear on the May 9th special town meeting warrant. Funding for education is always a substantial part of the budget, driven primarily by the Needham Public Schools in Line 21. This budget fully funds the recommendation of the school committee and represents an increase of $3.7 million or 4.4% over the current year. Note that costs associated with group health insurance for employees of the school department are budgeted under townwide expenses. In addition, Line 21 does not include school building costs such as maintenance, energy, or debt costs, which are funded through other lines of the budget. The school budget increase for fiscal year 2023 is driven primarily by contractual annual salary increases for existing staff and by the significant number of positions being added to the department. Salaries make up the largest part of the school budget, accounting for approximately 85% of that budget. Contractual salary increases account for over half of the increase in fiscal year 2023, though they remain within sustainability benchmarks. There are 25.82 additional full-time equivalent positions being added to the fiscal year 2023 budget, 
for the school department compared to the prior year. This is an, extra, an extraordinary amount and is needed to meet the increasing demand for student support services and special education, driven to a large extent by the pandemic. The school district has recently experienced an increase in the number and severity of mental health and behavioral issues, as well as issues stemming from the disruption to learning that are all caused by a growing need for academic intervention and learning support. A number of these new positions, 21.48 specifically, have already been introduced on a temporary basis using federal pandemic relief or state circuit breaker funds and are being retained to address the ongoing need. Unlike many prior years when enrollment growth has led to budget increases in the school department, enrollment is remaining relatively level following a sudden decline at the start of the pandemic. Though some modest increases in enrollment are projected in the coming years, Enrollment is not expected to reach pre-pandemic levels for over a decade, according to reports provided by the contracted demographer. The budget for the Department of Public Works in lines 23A through 23D is increasing $1.3 million, or 7.3% over the current year. This increase is in part due to additional staff, primarily relating to building maintenance. These needs reflect not only an increase in the inventory of town buildings, but also in the sophistication of systems being maintained in these upgraded facilities. For detailed descriptions of each of the other lines within the budget, I will refer town meeting members to section two of the budget letter beginning on page five of the warrant. Nevertheless, I wish to highlight select lines that have changed more than typical from prior years and two new lines in the budget that have not appeared in prior years. In line one of the budget, casualty liability, property, and self-insurance expenses are increasing $75,000 or 9.9% in fiscal year 2023. This covers premium increases as well as insurance coverage for new facilities, including Fire Station 2, which came online during the second quarter of fiscal year 2022, and the police headquarters, which was occupied in the third quarter of fiscal year 2022. In line two of the budget, debt service is declining for the second consecutive year due to decreases in excluded debt and CPA debt costs. This line does not include the costs of any debt that may be authorized through other articles at this town meeting, such as the proposed appropriation for the Emory Grover renovation. If those debts are authorized, they will be serviced beginning in subsequent fiscal years. In line five of the budget, the co contribution to the Retiree Insurance and Liability Fund under the main motion is increasing $418,000 or 5.6% in fiscal year 2023, in part due to reduction in the assumed rate of return for the fund. The actuarial and that valuation completed on June 30th, 2020, showed that the funding ratio was 35.7% of its projected liability, with a plan of reaching full funding in fiscal year 2041. Mr. Connolly's motion to amend would supplement this line item with an additional $1 million of free cash, bringing the total to $8,844,474, and the Finance Committee recommends adoption of the supplemental appropriation. Line eight of the budget, Injury on Duty and 111F, is a new line of the budget and consists of the funds available for payment of injury leave compensation or medical bills for public safety personnel who are not covered by other workers' compensation programs. Any unspent funds from this line item at the end of the fiscal year will be carried over to the Public Safety Injury on Duty Fund, which Town Meeting created last year to, a few, uh, to fund future injury leave costs. In lines 11A and B, the Select Board and Office of Town Manager budget is increasing 6.7%, over 60% of this increase is due to the Finance Committee's recommendation to add $50,000 to the expense line in order to fund the new Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Program. The program was originally planned as a pilot to be funded through a separate warrant article, but the Finance Committee felt that it was appropriate for this program to be considered for funding in the operating budget from the outset. Excluding that additional expense, the budget for the Select Board and Office of Town Manager is increasing 2.6%, due to annual salary increases and some additional recruiting expenses for human resources. In lines 18A through C, the fire department budget is increasing by 5%. I would note that the fiscal year 2023 budget is the first year when the salaries of eight firefighters who were originally hired with three years of partial grant funding will be funded fully through the budget. In lines 22A through B, the building design and construction department budget is decreasing 8.9% due to the retirement of the longtime director after the first quarter of fiscal year 2022. This completes a planned two year, uh, two position staff reduction in the department since fiscal year 2021, following the completion of a number of substantial construction projects in recent years. I would note that there are several large building projects currently under discussion, which may require reassessment of the staffing level in this department in the future. In line 31, Needham Council for Arts and Culture 
appears a new line in the budget and supplements a similar amount of funding for the council that it receives from the state. The council operates autonomously and provides grants to projects and programs that support culture and arts in Needham. The appropriation will also allow more long-term planning for the council. In closing, I would like to express my appreciation to town staff, administration, and managers. In particular, I would like to thank all the department heads along with the directors of finance for the town and for the schools. The finance committee knocks on their doors with questions throughout the budget process, and they greatly appreciate the candid and informed discussions. I also want to recognize the residents who commit their time and expertise to serve on the town boards and committees who are elected and appointed positions. The Finance Committee could not accomplish its mission as effectively without their hard work and collaboration. But more impressive is the dedication that employees have exhibited in keeping the town running throughout the pandemic. With little or no precedence and under the direction of the town manager, staff have been able to continue serving Needham residents in a responsive, adaptable, and resilient manner. Thank you. I also want to thank the town meeting members for their keen interest in the finances of our town as they review the proposed fiscal year 2023 operating budget. And I look forward to seeing everyone at Powers Hall on May 2nd.